So I'm back in London now, and thanks to everyone who's been watching our videos, I just wanted to give you a quick video on how I edit without a laptop. And I'm gonna share with you all of the equipment that we use and give you some of our favorite filming tips. Cycle touring is an amazingly cheap and eco-friendly way to explore your own area, your country, or even the whole world. And if you're thinking of going on a cycle tour soon, however big or small, and fancy filming it, I'll show you in this video just how easy it is to do, even if you do need to keep on cycling back to get your camera. So here it is, this is the Canon G7X Mark II, bought back in 2018, and this is the camera that we took all the way from London to Istanbul. So I'll keep it simple and tell you a couple of things that we loved about this camera and made it so suitable for cycle touring. Number one was the articulating screen. So as you can see, it just flips up like this. Really, really handy for when you're actually cycling on the go. And also, if you want to frame a time lapse or something like that, if you've got the tripod on, you can just use the screen like this so you don't have to get right on the floor to look at it through there. You can actually just look at it from top like this and frame your time lapse. So the other thing I love about this screen is it's a fully touch screen. So as you can see here, the bike is completely out of focus and the fireplace is in focus. And then it will just come into focus like that. And it just means you've got a lot more creativity so you can get some really, really beautiful shots. And the screen is really, really handy if you are gonna be cycling along because the autofocus is so good. You can just be as far or as close away and it will always stay focused onto your face. And as you can see there, you can actually log your own name into the uh, camera's software so it will always find you um, for example if you're in a crowd it will always pick you out and make sure you're in focus oh like I said just scoring there uh, what we actually took on our cycle tour was the gorilla tripod by Joby and this one we found really handy because obviously you can tie it around different things like a tree etc etc but it also folds up really nice and small so if you want to just pop it into your bar bag as you're cycling along it's, um, it's a pretty much a perfect fit for the Ortley bar bags. So if it does start to rain, you can just pop it in there and you're not gonna damage your camera. The camera as well is so small that you can actually just pop it into your pocket. So as you can see here, I've got these Carrymore trekking trousers that I picked up from Sports World for about 20 quid. They were brilliant for our cycle tour and I found the pockets perfectly fit the camera and also the tripod in there as well. So it's very easy to get in and out. Um, you can actually do it whilst you're cycling, pop open the screen and then can tar carry on filming. And here we are on our last day going towards Istanbul, just grabbed it out of my trousers. That sounds really dodgy, but it just shows you how easy it is to grab the camera and then just carry on filming. The camera is small, but I found the, the battery was actually pretty powerful and lasted quite a long time. But if you are wild camping or if you're in a campsite where you can't have access to a mains adapter, then you can actually power this camera by USB. So I've actually got a uh, external power pack and you can simply plug it into the USB and then charge it on the go. Another great feature is that the camera has Wi-Fi, which means you can easily transfer your uh, files over to the tablet or onto your phone. But what I prefer to do, because the Wi-Fi actually drains the battery quite a lot, is it's a really good idea to buy one of these external SD card readers and pop it into your tablet. Um, this way you can just pop in your SD card and it doesn't drain your battery on your camera and it transfers a bit quicker as well than Wi-Fi. Now the only real downside is of course that it doesn't have a microphone jack um, externally so the only microphone you've got is on the top of the camera here but when you've got your flip screen up the as I said when you're actually cycling along because the screen is there it does actually stop the wind quite a lot and I found the sound to be absolutely fine for what we needed it for. Uh, the DJI Spark Drone, or Sparky as we imaginatively called her. If you watched all our videos from London to Istanbul, you'll know what eventually happened to our, our little Sparky, but she gave us a lot of joy and may she rest in peace. For cycle touring, the drone was perfect. It, again, really because of its size and its weight and it was so, so simple to use. We could have taken the remote control with us, but I just found that I didn't really need it. The app on the phone is really, really easy. 
and it's got lots of automatic modes as well such as the um, the tripod one where you go straight up it's also got one a bit like a cyclone so it spins around you and you can also track yourself as well as you're cycling really really easy it also shoots in full HD and converts to MP4 automatically so you can easily edit the files and also this was really handy it can be charged by our external power pack so if you're cycling along and Sparky's in your pannier you can actually just keep it plugged in and then if you do need a couple of minutes up in the sky you can just get it up and get some amazing footage. The drone was really really helpful actually in the end. I did um and ah about taking a drone with us but it's so small it just weighs nothing and the effect it gets into our videos is just amazing uh, as you can see here. This is it. This is the Samsung Galaxy Tab S2 and I've been video editing my travels on this for over five years now and it hasn't let me down once. It's perfect for cycle touring as it's really lightweight, it's fast and it takes micro SD cards for more storage internally. So I'm gonna dive straight in. This is my screen and as you can see on the right here I've got the app called Power Director. Now this is the app I've been using for a couple of years and I found it very, very simple, very easy to use. So even if you've never had any experience with editing before, it's pretty much just drag in, copy and paste, cut a little bit, and then you can do some transitions and then you can add some text into it as well. It's basically everything you need to just cut together a nice little cycle tour video. So once you've opened the PowerDirect app, you see I've got a few old videos here and what I'm gonna do is click on new project if you want to use a video for YouTube, then naturally you're gonna click on the 16 by nine. Uh, if you want to do stories for Instagram, it's the 916. And for the one-to-one, -one, don't know what that's for to be honest. Uh, so gonna make a video here called test and then click on 16 by nine. Okay, so these are all the videos that I've currently got stored in my tablet and these were transferred straight from the camera via the SD card reader straight into the tablet and then I've organized them all into specific folders so that it's really easy to find when it comes to edit. Okay, so as I said, it's an incredibly simple app to use, so I'm gonna keep it simple. All you need to do is click on one of the folders and then click on one of the videos that you want to use, press plus, and it drops it down into the timeline. If you want to drop another one in there, press plus, and it will always go next. But if you wanna drop it in the middle, for example, so if I grab this one of Harriet Cycling, if you hold down, it won't just drop straight in. So hold it down and then just drag and drop it into the middle there. So now you can see we've got in this timeline you can just scroll left and right really really simple and you've got three videos now what I'm going to show you some very basic tips and uh, techniques just to edit these so let's see how long it is so if you click on the video itself on the timeline and then you can press play you can obviously see here we've got a really lovely sunset but maybe I think it's a bit too long so press pause and then what I want to do is just drag that left blob thing uh, in a little bit and then you can make the video a bit shorter and then let go. And then you can press play. And there we go, I'm pretty happy with that. I might just make it a little bit shorter, bring it in a bit. As I said, two to three seconds is normally really, really nice for the viewer to watch. Don't get bored, keeps them engaged. And then the next clip will just start going as well. So obviously when you're shooting a time-lapse you won't get any sound, but the next clip has got sound. If you don't want the sound, all you need to do is click on the video and then the top left hand corner here you've got a little pencil and this brings up all the different options so it's it's very straightforward but if you obviously want to take the volume off click on volume and then you can turn the volume off there or if you want to do a bit of maybe a bit of voiceover or if you want some music but you also want to hear the the sound of the bike going along the track for example then you can simply just change the volume here it always sets as a standard 100 so if I want a bit of background noise, I normally just drop it down to the 20s or something like that. Um, and then also, if you want to, you can fade in and fade out if you want to. And then press OK. And now what I want to do is to show you how you can cut the video clip in half as well. So if you scroll along left and right, see where you want it to be clipped, press on the video, and then on the top left you've got this little knife icon. And that just splits the video. So now what I could do is select the second half of the video and then move that little green blob to maybe around here and then as you can see we've kind of like skipped forward when Harriet's cycling so look at this and then it skips forward so now you've got a selection of clips all together and you might want to consider doing a little transition so you see this box here this little 
sort of rectangle one in between the different video clips simply click on that and then you've got all these different transitions now you can choose obviously whichever one you want but I prefer to keep it quite simple and uh, if you're going from an introduction to the main video I think it's quite nice to have a bit of a blur so click on that and then as you've already selected the, the rectangle on the timeline press plus and it will jump in there click on one of the video clips to go back onto the main screen press play and this is what it looked like So now your video is starting to really come together and you've got a transition, you've, you're happy with the length of each clip. Now we want to add a bit of text into it. So top left hand corner again, you've got the button here which is sort of the layers. Um, and as you can see you can add a, add a title in or you can add a video which I'll show you a bit later or an image. Now all of these go on top of the video that's already on there. Okay. So again just on the top left hand corner, this is everything that's going to go in the top. So this button here. If you want anything to go just below or overlay, then it's this one, and this is layers. So very simply put, click on the T for title, and then that will go straight into your style of titles that you want. So as you can see, you've got all different sorts of things here as well. Now, if you want to play it simple, you can just go the default. You can actually show you, um, actually let me show you here. So for example, flocking, press the play button, and you can see how your title is going to look. Now um, again, it depends on your personal preference. I like to keep it simple, so let's go with maybe a fade. So click on that, and then press plus, and it will go straight down. Now what you need to do is click on the Cyberlink um, writing there, and then you can see this is the default. So click on Cyberlink in the middle, and then what I like to do is double click on this, and then you can delete, and then start writing your title. Okay, so now we've got the title on there, but I want to add my logo, um, or you might want to add a bit more writing on there. Again, click on the layers, and then instead of text, you can click on the image. I know that I've got my logo stored in this folder. Simply click in there, click on the logo, and then you're back onto the main timeline screen, press play, and you can see it comes in like that. Now, if you want to add some music onto your video or some sound clips or voiceovers, simply click on the top left, and then the music icon, and then anything you've downloaded is just going to be in here, for example. So I get all my music from a website called bensound.co.uk or .com, I think. And also from ES, that stands for Epidemic Sound. Now, Epidemic Sound is about £10 a month. But what I did, I paid for one month and then withdrew my subscription, but downloaded enough songs to keep me going over the couple of months that we were cycling away. If you want this song, you can preview it here. If you're happy with that, press plus, press play, and then you can make sure your music actually matches up with, uh, with what's happening on the screen. Now, obviously most people who are gonna be showing these to their family and friends, they wanna show some photos as well. So you can do that too. Um, so you can just go onto the images here. And let's just pick up one of these albums, stick in one of the photos. But then because the photo isn't the same aspect as the video, you're going to get these black lines on the left and right. So what we want to do is just fill the screen so it doesn't look so amateur. Um, okay, so just press the pencil on the left, press crop, and then just using two fingers, just zoom in a little bit and it just snaps into place. And then when you press play, it'll all be the same size as the video. Show a couple of other things you could do. If you wanted to pan and zoom, you can do a custom motion. So press on custom motion. So you can see the start position is where we've just made it. We've just made it fill the screen. Maybe if you want to zoom in slowly, you go to the second one and then you can sort of finish there. So the end position will be slightly zoomed in and then click back on the screen, press play. We'll zoom out and uh, there you go. 